Hey guys, welcome to the video, welcome to the garage. In this video, we're going to be uh, lacing in the wiring harness for the Ecotech, going over the programming that I got done on the Ecotech. One of the big hurdles in doing the Ecotech was getting the uh, ECM, which is this, this is the computer that controls the Ecotech, figuring out how I was going to get that reprogrammed. It needs to be reprogrammed because if you just pull it out of the car from the junkyard like I did, it's programmed to do all sorts of things that we don't want it to do. Uh, things like communicate with the other modules in the vehicle and and all sorts of things that'll make it so that you can't just You can't just pull it from the car and wire it up standalone and be good to go You just you can't do that. You need to have it reprogrammed Now if you're familiar with HP tuner and you have HP tuner you can do that yourself and that's great I'm not familiar with HP tuner. I don't have HP tuner I'm not interested in buying it and trying to figure out how to program these. So that wasn't really something that I was interested in at the time. So what I did is obviously a whole bunch of internet searches, uh, gathering all sorts of information. I ended up calling uh, AlphaFab, which is a company out of Michigan, which basically specializes in Ecotech swaps similar to this. I called them up. Uh, they were very friendly, very willing to give me a lot of information because I was basically a newbie. I didn't really, obviously this is my first Ecotech swap. So I was asking them lots of questions and different scenarios, different ways that I could do things. Um, I was really impressed with how willing they were to work with me. So I ended up sending this. This is the computer that I, I literally pulled from the junkyard when I pulled my Ecotech. I sent this to them and they reprogrammed it. They put a standalone program on here so that now when I wire this up, this should have only what it needs on it to operate the engine. Now, they'll do this for you for $350. You send them your computer, they'll put their program on it, you'll be good to go. In order to do that, then you need to trim your own wiring harness. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video today. I'm gonna to take the factory wiring harness that I grabbed with the motor, with the computer, and I'm going to take things off of it that I don't need and reconnect things that it does need that it doesn't have now because of how I ripped it off the car. Um, and I'm going to go through the wiring harness and do all of that. Now, that's a, that's a bit risky um, because number one, it's an old wiring harness. Number two, there's a lot to it. And AlphaFab, you know, they're sending you their program. So they've programmed this, but they're relying on you to be able to properly wire up and make this wiring harness. And that's a little bit risky to them because they might do the programming and then you might have some things not properly done in your wiring harness that will make it appear as though there's something wrong with the computer. So it can get a bit frustrating for both parties. So what they recommend is for $750 from AlphaFab, they'll supply you with a computer and it'll have their program on it and then they'll also give you a brand new wiring harness that they made that is specifically made for a standalone ecotech and it's going to have the relays built into it for the fuel pump and the electric fans and everything that you need so basically you would get the computer from them you would get the wiring harness you would plug it in 
you would supply it with some grounds and supply it with some ignition voltage and some battery voltage and you would be good to go. And it's all brand new, it's brand new connectors, brand new wire, everything. So you're gonna watch me do it this way. For 350 bucks I had them program the computer and now I'm going to trim my wiring harness and I'm gonna get it going in this video. We're gonna set that all up. And then in the next video, or maybe maybe two videos from now, we'll actually be doing, we'll be starting up the motor, so then we'll know for sure if the wiring harness was done properly. So what I'm saying is, option number one is the way that I'm doing it for $350. But if you can swing it, uh, I think it would be a lot easier, a lot easier and probably safer for you to do the $750 kit, because then you're just gonna get everything that you need, you're just gonna plug it all in, hook it up with power, and you'll be good to go. So let's go down to the basement. I'm gonna show you the wiring harness, then we're gonna bring it up into the garage and start lacing it into the motor and figuring out what's what. All right, so here I've got, this is my wiring harness, and what you're looking at here is, when I grabbed the wiring harness, it was obviously all wrapped in uh, plastic and tape and everything. I took all of that off, because I wanted to inspect the wiring harness and I'm, I'm gonna need to be able to take a lot of this out once I get it up there and I start trimming it. So I took all the tape, I took all the plastic off, then I washed it in the sink just with hot soap and water and I, I cleaned all the connectors and I cleaned all the wires as much as I could without being too abusive to the harness itself. I cleaned that all up, then I dried it out and I mean I dried it with, you know, I took my air compressor and I blew some compressed air, not high, like 40 PSI. I blew some compressed air in here to, to blow out all the terminals and everything because I knew it was going to sit for a while while I was working on some other things. But I blew it all out and I laid it out. It's actually been laying out ever since just so that it could dry. So now it's relatively clean. It's 100% dry. It's ready to go. So let's go upstairs and I'm going to show you the the wiring diagram and how I highlighted everything so that when I actually go and put this on the motor, it's going to be relatively simple. All right, so here's what I did. If you watched the other videos, um, I'll put a link to it here. In one of the other videos, um, I showed you how you can get your factory manual for $20. So this is that manual. I went to pinouts and I printed out everything for the pinouts. Pinouts are where they'll they'll show you the connector, and then they'll they'll give you the connector numbering, and then basically on all the connectors they'll tell you what number each connector goes to, and then you can trace that down to the connectors and uh, and figure out where everything is and what it needs to. It's tedious, but it can be done. There's six places that these wires can go, and I made a I did it I identified it all with color. You can see here and uh, then I highlighted everything with that color in the wiring harness. So basically, in my book, if I highlighted it with blue, it's for plug one on the ECM. Purple is plug two on the ECM. Green is plug three on the ECM. Um, pink means that it gets power from the battery, which pretty much means that anytime the battery is hooked up, this one gets power. Orange is ignition. That means when I turn the key on, it supplies that with battery power. And then uh, yellow highlighter means ground. So I labeled, you know, this is the pinouts for plug one. You can see that the orange ones there get ignition voltage, pink there, that's gonna be battery. And these blue ones means that these are going out to one of my sensors. If it doesn't have any highlighters on it, then that means that on my setup, it's not going to be used. And then what I did is like this, Pin number 33, they tell you the wire color, they tell you the circuit number, they tell you what it is, it's just a five volt reference, there's a lot of those. Then I labeled it with what it actually is and this one is the APP, which is the accelerator pedal position. Then here we get to connector two. There's a lot going on with connector two, so everything labeled here is leaving connector two going somewhere. Then we get here to the green, this is connector number three on the ECM. Then what we have here is a list of all the sensors. And what I did here is I just highlighted all the sensors that I'm using. Anything that's not highlighted are sensors that I will not be using on the motor. And it's really just things like 
the fuel tank pressure sensor, the evaporative emission canister pur purge solenoids, and, and things like that. But what you have here is I printed out the pinouts for each sensor. So like this is the accelerator pedal position. This one here is the camshaft position actuator solenoid. So it's got two wires that would go to it. One is the, I don't even know what that is. It just says, actu oh, this is the actuator solenoid and the other one is low reference. It's highlighted in purple, which tells me that it goes to connector number two on the ECM. And now every one of my sensors, that's what I did. So, you know, if I can immediately look at it and see if it's purple. It's going to connector two. You can see here on the ignition coils, I've got a purple one, which means it's going to connector two. And then this one is orange, which means that when I turn on the ignition, that one should get power. I printed out most of the wiring schematics and then I, I highlighted them with the paths that I'll be using. And then I designated it as the, the colors that I used in the, uh, the pinouts. So as an example, I've got the engine control module, the ECM highlighted right here. And then this is the fuse block up under the dash. So this tells me how the power is getting from the fuse block to the ECM. So then I highlighted it like these are coming from ignition. So I highlighted these in orange. So that tells me that's how I figured out what pinouts at the ECM need to get that voltage. And then if you look over here, this one's pink. So this one is the battery positive. So that's how I figured out how the ECM is getting the battery positive. And these are the ALDL connectors and the grounds. And I just went through each one. Each schematic kind of highlights different areas. And I just, I would highlight my sensors. And then I, with the appropriate color, I would just highlight how they were getting their sensors or their power or their grounds or what have you. I mean, I spent... I spent hours going through doing all this, but once you do that, you have a pretty good roadmap of where things are fed from and where they're going. And in the process of doing all this highlighting it, you really get a pretty good understanding of, of how your whole system's going to work. So I highly recommend doing this since you can print all this out for $20 and then just grab some highlighters. Uh, it's, it's very helpful so that once I get this all in place and I'm trimming it, I'll have a really good roadmap as to where all the wires should be going. And then if I do end up having some problems, I can imagine that this will really help me with the troubleshooting. Anyways, that's how I made my uh, wiring diagrams and my book. And this, this is a, a very valuable resource now for when I go out there and trim the wiring harness. Um, so let's go do that now. We'll go grab the harness out in the basement, throw it up on the motor, just kind of lay it in place, start plugging everything in and uh, see what we can start trimming. So here is my wiring harness. Now I'm going to start kind of laying it out, plugging things in, and just kind of seeing where it fits.
video where I actually start up the motor, I'll show you how I tied in the wiring from the throttle pedal and the ALDL and the cleaning up of the wiring harness. It'll still be, it won't be all uh, like wire loomed in any of that yet. I'm not going to do that until I actually run the engine, probably get a test drive on it so that I make sure that everything that I need is good and communicating and whatnot. But I will have a lot of this stuff cleaned up by the time I go to actually start it up. So thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's possibly helping you with some of your projects and maybe getting you out into the garage or the shop or whatever to work on your own projects. And hopefully I see you in our next video. Take care.